The causes of the Hungarian crisis. The Hungarians, the first one, hated their leader, Matthias Rakosi. They lived in constant fear of the secret police and the country was still occupied by the Soviets. To add insult to injury, the Hungarians themselves were forced to pay for the Soviets to occupy them. Another cause, well, they're all causes, all kind of linked together, but in February 1956, Khrushchev made his secret speech, which we've talked about in lessons, denouncing Stalin and all evil acts committed by Stalin in the name of communism. This was to send shockwaves through the communist world as people living behind the Iron Curtain woke up to the possibility that the USSR might be led now by someone who could not crush them or would not crush them if they resisted. In June 1956, Khrushchev met Marshal Tito, uh, who again we've mentioned in class of the Yugoslavia, and agreed that the path to socialist development differs in various countries and conditions, that the multiplicity of forms of socialist development tends to strengthen socialism, and that any tendency of imposing one's opinions on the ways and forms of socialist development is alien to both. <sighs> in other words, countries should be allowed freedom to find their own way to socialism, rather than being forced to do it the Soviet way, as Stalin had tried to force them. This helped to mend the rift between Tito and, US and the USSR, but it's going to be significant for Eastern European countries if they're not going to be forced to do it exactly the way the USSR says. Perhaps as a result of the new regime in the USSR, and because of the agreement with Tito, maybe, and the, the secret speech itself, all of those three things together, well, meant in June 1956, some Hungarian communists dared to oppose Rakosi. Rakosi, as he would have done under Stalin, appeared to, appealed to Moscow for help. He wanted the 400 leaders of this opposition group arrested. But Khrushchev was determined to change the reputation of communism and wouldn't help him. He stayed true to what he said in the secret speech. So the USSR forced the retirement from leadership of Hungary of Rakosi. Rakosi was briefly, briefly replaced by his second in command, who was called Gero, but the Hungarians wouldn't accept him either. And mass demonstrations broke out, including the tearing down of a statue of Stalin in October. Lots, I mean, thousands of Hungarians were coming out on the streets. The USSR, instead, I mean, what they would have done in the past if it had been Stalin or people acting in the sort of way Stalin's would, they would have sent in the troops and they would have sorted it out. But Khrushchev was trying something different. So instead he allowed a new government to form in Hungary under the more popular Imre Naj, which is spelt Nagy. And they agreed to withdraw from their, from their occupation of Hungary. So, interestingly... The Hungarians kind of get their own way. New government, still communism, but new government, more popular man, Naj. And the Soviets agree to get out of Hungary. See, and it seems to kind of work. Um, because it, it does actually make the um, protests and things die down a little bit. But Naj's government begins to make plans to hold free elections. To restore private ownership of farms, rather than collectivization. To leave the Warsaw Pact as well. Now, that is the biggie. Because they also said they were going to declare neutrality in the Cold War. The Leaving the Warsaw Pact thing was a step too far. So Khrushchev had tried a more moderate response to the Hungarian uprising, and they'd repaid him by trying to leave the Warsaw Pact. It was the threat to leave the Warsaw Pact above all else that led to the USSR sending in troops. If Hungary were allowed to leave then it was likely that other countries might try to follow suit and the whole of the communist bloc in Eastern Europe might have collapsed. Khrushchev realised he could not allow that. They'd gone too far and he had to send in the troops. At the same time of all of this was going on, there's quite a significant world event that whilst it's not specifically Europe and you wouldn't write lots in an essay about it, there was a bit of an event going on in Egypt. The British had built something called the Suez Canal to connect oceans so it was quicker to get to India. And uh, they controlled the Suez Canal because, well, they'd, we'd built it. Um, and the French had part control of the Suez Canal as well by this time. But in Egypt, Colonel Nasser had seized power and had become friendly with the USSR. 
which had led to the USA cancelling loans to Egypt and they wanted to pay for important projects like building dams and things. They needed money from somewhere and so what NASA did is he seized control of the Suez Canal, which runs through Egypt, from the French and the British. Um, the Israel was also a bit of an enemy of Egypt at the time. So Israel, Britain and France invaded Egypt. And Khrushchev really thought that his new ally, NASA, was about to be removed from power. So Khrushchev could have lost Hungary and an ally in North Africa all in a matter of weeks. And that was unacceptable. So this is another reason why he clamped down on Hungary, because at the time that this Hungarian crisis was going on, it was there was a, 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 a crisis going on in Egypt, which could have meant a double defeat for, for Khrushchev. He could not look weak in Hungary. We'll look at what happened next. What happened? It took the USSR two weeks to crush the Hungarians, who fought back fiercely. But the rebels didn't have the weaponry of the Soviet army, nor the numbers. Estimates vary from as high as 30,000 Hungarian dead, but it's probably more likely to have been around 3,000, with seven to 8,000 Russians dead, so they definitely gave a bit of payback. Whilst this happened, the US broadcast across Radio Free Europe to try to encourage the revolt in Hungary, but they didn't really have any intention of intervening, even if they hinted to the Hungarians over the radio that they might. It was a bit of a sneaky tactic to prolong the uprising. Eisenhower even had his Secretary of State announce that the US had no intention of looking upon Hungary as potential military allies. Um, so they made it really clear to the Soviets that they weren't going to intervene. A great surprise to Britain and Khrushchev too was that in Egypt, the US President Eisenhower, uh, who was running in an election at the time, refused to back the French, British and Israelis in their attack against NASA. N not the space program. Uh, N-A-S-S-E-R. Eisenhower condemned the invasion and cancelled the loan to Britain. Khrushchev exploited this split in the West by threatening nuclear missile strikes on Britain, France and Israel if they didn't withdraw. So Britain, France and Israel, at the point of victory, withdrew from Egypt. This withdrawal because, was because of the lack of US support rather than Khrushchev's threats, but Khrushchev didn't necessarily think that. He thought his threats had worked. So from looking like he was going to potentially lose Hungary and an ally in North Africa, Khrushchev ended up keeping control of Hungary and the ally in North Africa stayed. So to the consequences. A new leader called Janos Kadar became leader of Hungary. Naj was executed. Kadar set about rooting out and destroying resistance. And I can't help but thinking when I say his name of saying it like this. Kadar! Uh, but it's not really that sort of name because he didn't do some nice thing. He did some nasty things that he did. Anyway, uh, he set about rooting out and destroying resistance. Thirty-five thousand people were arrested and three hundred executed. He did carry out some reforms, but he never attempted nor suggested that he ever wanted to attempt to leave the Warsaw Pact. Amongst the Western Allies, there was some ill feeling over this whole fallout over Egypt, but it didn't last very long and had no real impact on future Western cooperation. But Khrushchev thought that it was his tough actions in Hungary that had worked and his tough actions in threatening the West over Egypt. So he grew in confidence because the West had done nothing to stop him in Hungary and they'd, well, France, Britain and Israel had withdrawn from Egypt because he thought, because of his threats, though it wasn't really because of that, it was because the USA um, didn't support the French, British and Israelis. So it led to him acting tough and making threats over Berlin from 1958 to 61, which helped to cause the Berlin crisis of 1958-61. So Hungary and the actions Khrushchev took gave him confidence and made him think, ah, this worked, I'll do this again. And that's what he did in Berlin, causing another crisis. How well did the Soviets deal with the Hungarian crisis? There are many opinions that you could have of this. One of them could be that the speed, swiftness and severity of the Soviet response was evidence of their strength and their grip on Eastern Europe. Another interpretation is the fact that they felt they had to act so severely was because their grip on Eastern Europe was weak. 
Khrushchev initially tried to deal with things in a different way to Stalin, and indeed, as the Hungarians got their own way, the revolts actually stopped for a while, but the Hungarians did not want to stop at the few freedoms Khrushchev had granted them, and Nagy's plan to withdraw from the Warsaw Pact was unacceptable to the USSR and other Warsaw Pact nations. Khrushchev's granting of freedoms had led to a, a big choice for him when the Hungarians tried to go too far. Firstly, he could choose to do nothing and let them continue to gain more freedoms, which would have led to the Hungarian withdrawal from the Warsaw Pact. And almost certainly, it would have led people in other Eastern European countries to try the same thing. Thus, if he'd chosen that option, it could have made the complete breakup of the communist bloc in Eastern Europe a very likely consequence. Secondly, he could send in the tanks and crush the revolt. The problem for all the Soviet leaders during the Cold War was that the majority of people in Eastern Europe did not want to be communist, or did not want to be dominated by the Soviet Union, or both. So any freedom led to people trying to pull away, and the whole communist bloc had to be maintained by force. So Khrushchev came with some nice ideas about not acting like Stalin, but when push came to shove, he ended up acting a little bit like Stalin. A lesser known consequence of the Hungarian crisis was that Khrushchev's place in the USSR was strengthened. Historian Dulles called Khrushchev the most dangerous person to lead the Soviet Union since the October Revolution. So basically the most dangerous person to ever lead the Soviet Union. What he meant by this was that Stalin, though utterly ruthless, was quite a calculating man who didn't take unnecessary risks. Khrushchev, on the other hand, was trying something called nuclear diplomacy or brinkmanship, both of which are good little phrases to use in your exam. That's what Khrushchev was trying. What it means is he was willing to use the threat of nuclear war to achieve his aims and thereby doing so bringing the world to the brink, hence brinkmanship, of nuclear destruction. Never wanted to destroy the world, obviously, who the heck would? But he wanted to make it look like he was threatening that to get his own way. One problem for the world was that Khrushchev's use of brinkmanship, whilst the Suez and Hungarian crises were going on, happened at the same time, remember, was that to Khrushchev it seemed to work. The West didn't interfere in Hungary, and France, Britain and Israel withdrew from Egypt, even though they did so actually because the USA were upset with their actions had seemed to Khrushchev that his nuclear diplomacy or brinkmanship got results. So as far as the USSR was aware, Khrushchev's threats were a clever way of getting his own way. And this was to lead to the crisis in Germany, more specifically in Berlin, in the early 1960s when Khrushchev, well, late 50s, early 60s, when Khrushchev would try nuclear diplomacy again to try get his own way over Berlin and to get the West to leave it. So, as far as how well the Soviets dealt with the Hungarian crisis, you could say that the Soviets themselves judged that they had dealt with it exceptionally well. Oh, well done, Soviet. I imagine thinking, ah, hey, we did a great job there. Well done, Sergei. Ah, thank you very much, yes. Um, but the reality was that they over-exaggerated or misjudged the success that their own actions had. And this kind of led them to trying the same tactics again over Berlin in the early 60s, which ultimately led to the Berlin Wall. You could also say that in the short term... They dealt with the crisis decisively and indeed kept the Eastern Bloc intact through their use of military force. But in the long term, they just showed that it was only military force that kept the Eastern Bloc together. And they undoubtedly became even more unpopular, certainly in the eyes of many ordinary Hungarian citizens. Yeah.